Greetings once again, AP Calculus AP students. Mr. Record here from my classroom here at Avon High School. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about one of our last videos in the series on topic 4.2, straight line motion, connecting velocity, acceleration, back to position. Got a really great activity here for this particular video that's going to help put things all together. And we're going to look at this before we go into our physical example uh, covering example six that will require a graphing calculator just so that you guys know. So what is it that I mean by putting it all together? Well, I'm going to try to do the best I can to move my camera out of the way, but it's going to unfortunately be covered up by a little bit of text. But I say that questions that involve motion are very common on the AP exam. I've mentioned that time and time again throughout these videos. So we're going to need to be able to use equations, take a derivatives as needed to answer those kinds of questions that involve motion. And so what I thought I would do is we would break down and decode these questions into some math equations. So let's consider the following situations. We have a statement. We want to be able to translate that into our mathematics. I often say that math is, is like a foreign language. You want to be able to translate from English into mathematics, in this case calculus. And then what's more importantly is this green column. What are going to be the steps that we're going to take to solve these kinds of questions? So you can refer to this document if you're a student of mine. Uh, if you're not a student of mine, um, you can probably make a document very similar or you can just uh, resort back to the video if you ever want to um, kind of figure out what kind of procedure would you use if you saw these kinds of statements. So again, let's pretend that we have a bug that's moving along a, a straight line, uh, an X axis, a horizontal line. It's a lot more interesting when we talk about a bug moving than just say a particle moving. So if we have a situation where the bug is stopped, what does the bug is stopped really truly mean? Well, we know that that means that the velocity of that bug, or v of t, we'll call it, is equal to zero. That's how you would translate. Now, what does that mean? How do you solve? Well, you would actually set whatever v of t equation that you have. Maybe you have to find it. Maybe you have to take a derivative of position. But you would just set v of t equal to zero and then solve for t. There's really nothing more to it. Now, maybe this is a calculator-assisted problem um, because the v equation is very, very, very uh, challenging. Or maybe it's one that you can do by pencil and paper. OK, now what if you see a situation where the bug is moving to the right? How do you translate that? Well, that means that your velocity is a positive number. v of t is greater than 0. So basically, you would figure out, well, when does v of t equal 0? Now, it's interesting. You actually do the same thing as you would do it as if the bug was stopped. But from here, you're going to have to use a sign chart and figure out when we are positive and when we are a negative. Now, this is dependent upon whether it's a calculator-assisted problem or not. Either way, if it's a calculator problem, you would um, probably likely graph in this case. But if it's a non-calculator problem, you would rely on your sign chart. Now notice, when we talk about sign chart, what I mean is a number line. That's when you draw out your number line, and let's say you have these various t values in question where the velocity is equal to zero. And then you would figure out the sign of the velocity. And we typically just put signs above them for positive and negative. So that's what I mean when I refer to sign chart. All right, if the bug is moving to the left, pretty much the same situation, except the velocity is going to be negative. As far as the steps to solve, See the above. It's exactly the same thing. You're going to set v of t equal to 0 and use a sign chart or graph if it's a graphing calculator problem. What about if the bug turns around? What does that mean? Well, the translation just simply means that v of t has changed signs. OK. So you're, again, always looking at the velocity. It's amazing how many things the velocity will tell you about the motion of this bug. All right. So again, 
you're going to do the same setup. You're going to take your velocity, set it equal to zero, put together your sign chart, and then you can see whenever we have a change in signs, you've got that situation where your bug or your particle has changed directions. Well, what about if you're looking at the statement, the bug is speeding up? Well, as we've talked about in some previous videos, this is a situation where you have to compare both a of t and v of t. So you have to look at both velocity and acceleration, and we know that we speed up if a and v have the same signs. Okay, so what would your steps to solve be? Well, basically you have to find and evaluate a of t for some t and v of t for some t. And they're going to give you that t, typically. Now, if they don't give you that t, what you might have to do is lay down a pair of number lines that have your acceleration and your velocity, do your sign charts, and just line them up and see when they have same signs or opposite signs. The bug is slowing down. Again, a very similar situation, except now the translation is that your a of t and your v of t have opposite signs. So one will be positive and one will be negative. It doesn't really matter which is which. In either case, you've got a bug that's slowing down or a particle that's slowing down. And again, the steps to solve are just like before, right? It might be a situation where if you don't know the T, you lay down your two number lines and compare their signs on top of one another. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our example six uh, that uses some of these ideas. Again, this is a calculator assisted question. It says a particle moves along the x-axis with a position function defined by x of t equal to the sine of e to the 0.5t. Determine for which of the integer values t equal 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 is the particle both to the right of the y-axis and is speeding up. And it says to explain your reasoning. Now, as I said before, we have a calculator active question here thanks due in part to this really nasty looking position. There's a lot of ways that you could do this problem with the calculator, but I would really like a, to investigate the most efficient way. And it can be form, uh, performed on most any model of a graphing calculator. I'm gonna show you, of course, on the TI Inspire and maybe talk about how a TID4 could handle this. So let's take a look at this. So here we are, the very beginning stages of our TI Inspire. And what I would do is I would suggest that we make a document for this. I want to utilize the calculator's list and spreadsheet capabilities. So I'm going to go into a new document and I'm going to choose, first of all, a calculator page. I want to go ahead and define this x of t function so that I can use it throughout. So I could call this x of t and we define on the Inspire uh, by hitting Control Math Template. That's just one of the many ways to define. And I can hit my trig menu to get my sign and then my e and raise that to the 0.5t power. Now, if I hit enter, it's going to say done, which means I'm stored. Now, if you're watching this video outside of Avon and you have a TI-84 model, you could do the same thing by going into your Y1 menu, and you would call this the sine of e to the 0.5x power. And you can do some similar things that we're about to do with our document. So the next thing that we're going to do for the TI Inspire is we're going to make another page. I'm going to hit Control Doc, <clears throat> excuse me, add a new page, and this will be a list and spreadsheet, the TI Inspire's version of Microsoft Excel. And we have this particular window. Now, I'm going to, for the sake of this uh, demonstration, use really descriptive names to label my columns. So I want T, which really is just the time, one, two, three, or four, and five for the first column. I'm going to have my second column be the position, and my third column be my velocity, and my fourth column be acceleration. And I'm just going to abbreviate those. 
Generally, what you put in those four headings don't really matter much if we're going to use some formulas to compute. So in my T column, I'm going to use my five times that the problem gave, one, two, three, four, and five. And then if you remember for the position, we've got it defined already as x of t. So if I go to the second row, that's where your formula row goes, I just simply have to type x parenthesis t parenthesis. And if I hit enter, it's going to ask me, is this going to be a column or a variable reference? And I want this to be a variable reference. In other words, I want x to kind of act as a dependent variable. t is the independent variables I have off to the side there. And if I choose that, I will have my positions for those various times. If you're using a TI-84 calculator, you would go to your table settings and you would do something very, very similar. All right, now if I want my velocity values here, and you might think, well, why would I need velocity? Well, remember that this question asks us if we could figure out what times is the particle to the right of the y-axis and for what times that we're speeding up. The idea of the speeding up needs both the velocity and the acceleration information. As far as when are we to the right of the y-axis, well, we can answer that right now, right? For which of these values are positive, because that would be a position to the right of zero, which is to the right of the y-axis. And right now, it looks like one, two, and four are our candidates. But now we have to see for which of those candidates do we have this speeding up behavior. So the big question is, how do you get the velocity entered into the calculator? Pretty easy. Let's take the derivative of position. And so we can just jump right to our shortcut here. There's many ways that you can do this. Uh, one way is to hit Control, I'm sorry, Shift and Minus. That brings up your derivative template. And notice that it might be kind of hard to see in the cell, but if you look down below, you get a little bit better depiction of what you're typing in. Remember, we want to type our expression in with respect to t, and then our position was x of t. Notice everything is nice and bold. That means it's being recognized by the calculator. Once you hit enter, you're going to get that same conflicting window, which just simply means we can resolve that by saying that we want another variable reference. And we want all variables referenced here. Once we do that, we have the velocity at each of those times. We have a negative velocity, a negative velocity, a negative followed by two positives, which means this particle was moving to the left at time one, two, and three before it decided to move to the right during times four and five. We're gonna do the same thing with our acceleration. Now with this one, I think we might wanna go ahead and use our math template because we want a second derivative here. So if you choose the button next to the nine, and you can see I already had it highlighted here, it's in the second row, third one from the right, that is the second derivative. And again, it's kind of hard to see up here, but jump down to the bottom and you can enter your t for your independent variable. And then you're going to take the second derivative of x of t there. And then if we hit enter, again, let's resolve this by calling this a variable reference one more time. Hit OK and boom, there we go. We have all the information that we need. Now, give me a moment here. I'm going to copy and paste this back into our document so that we can finally answer this question. So here we are back at our document. We've got our familiar friend, our list and spreadsheet page from our graphing calculator, and now we can answer the question. So first of all, we can go ahead and state our claim about for which values uh, is the particle moving to the right? Well, we can start by saying the particle moves right or is moving right at the following times. That would be at t equal one, let me write it here, one and two. In fact, let me do this. Let me highlight. That might show up just a little bit better. We're 
looking at what positive values that we had from our table. And so that would occur at times 1, 2, and 4. Let's write that a little bit more legibly. At times 1, 2, and 4. And the reason for this is because, we can abbreviate because, v of t or x prime of t is greater than 0 at those values. Now if we look at when is the particle speeding up, we'll use another argument there and say, well, the particle is speeding up at time t equal. And now we're going to go back to our table of values. I'm going to get out the highlighter again. And remember, we're looking for pairs of a's and v's that have the same sign. Notice in our first pairing, they are both negative. In our second pairing, they are both negative. And all the way down to our fifth pairing, they're both positive. Those are the only three instances where velocity and acceleration are the same sign. And so we can say at times 1, 2, and 5. The reasoning is going to be because v of t and a of t have the same sign. And we're using our table to reinforce that information. Now, our question in this problem was, when are both of those events happening simultaneously? In other words, what is the intersection of those two sets of times? The intersection of 1, 2, 4 and 1, 2, 5 would be times 1 and 2. And so we could just simply say the particle is moving right or moving to the right and speeding up at t equal 1 and 2. Now there are certainly other ways that this can be written that's not as wordy. I tend to try to be a little bit more detailed when I work through the videos because I want to model some really good behavior. I want to model some good explanations so I know that you would never run the risk of losing points when you try to convey what's happening with particle motion when you're at your school taking your tests, your homework, your quizzes, or whatnot. I hope that this video helps. We only have one more example that we're going to work through, example seven, that pertains to straight line motion. We're going to revisit the idea of motion that's affected by gravity, which isn't a big part of the AP exam, but it's still a really intriguing way to wrap up this particular concept. Again, hope this helps, and we'll see you at the next video.